to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm your uh, co-host for the show today. And um, this is a show about uh, condo living and for people uh, who work with uh, associations. And uh, my guest today is uh, Raylene Tenno. She's the program director for uh, Hawaii Council of Association Apartment Owners. Hi, Raylene. Hello. Hi. <laughs> And, um, and oh, we, and Raylene, I want to make an announcement. Raylene is going to be a, a co-host of Condo Insider, and she starts her own show next week. Welcome <laughs> aboard, Raylene. Thank you. So kind of excited to get that going. Yeah. And, you know, uh, our show today, our show today is about, you know, the 2021 Hawaii legislature that just started, what, two weeks ago, what, January 20th, it started. And... So uh, we're going to be talking about bills uh, that have been introduced uh, so far, and these are condo bills. And this doesn't mean that these are bills that are going to pass. In fact, two of them have already died. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to re refer to them in passing, but that shows you how quickly, uh, you know, these things move. But before we start, you know, for those people who are listening and want to participate in the legislature, we have, uh, we're going to show them how they can, right, Raylene? Yes, and it's actually, it's really simple, you know, so um, we created a PowerPoint that we can distribute to people to kind of stay on, um, on, stay abreast. And actually the website is, the state website is so much easier now. You can even, so you have to create an account. And then from there, when you log in, you can submit testimony. You can even track individual um, bills that you, um, can set up for yourself and it will give you alerts when there's hearings. So it's, it's so much user friendly than it used to be before. So in order to submit, um, did you want to review the bills first? No, no, no. Why don't we just look, you know, go through how people can uh, participate okay. and submit testimony if they want to participate in the legislature. Okay. So up on the screen, you should show, so it's the welcome page of the Hawaii state legislature. Um, so up at the top on the, Right hand side would be where you either sign in or you register to establish account. So um, next. And so that's just a, a bigger version. And on this PowerPoint is actually the link for the website, which is um, www.capital.hawaii.gov. And then on the next page would show the whole page um, where you sign up. So you would have your name. If you belong to an organization, if you wanna fill that out, phone number, email address, which is a requirement. And then you create your password and then you have to agree to the privacy policy um, and then cre um, click create user and then next and then your your, pa your page will look like this um, so you have the um, recent updates so you can you can see everything that's going on with the legislature um, and then you have these orange buttons in the middle of the page so that's where you can create um, do su submit testimony you can create um, a template for yourself to get hearing notifications on the bills that you're interested in. And then also you, the, the measure tracking is where you can do a, um, it's a form, you create all the, all the bills that you're interested in. And then it cre creates kind of like an Excel spreadsheet that has all the measure, um, all the bill tracking information. And then the next one. So in, in case you're having a hard time, they even have a help section. So that's really good. And the next one. Um, so to submit testimony, you need to know what the bill number is, whether it's an HB or an SB. Um, so you put in that bill number and then you click continue. Um, and then it will show um, your, um, you can do your testimony. But then there's also a help page and I have it right up on the screen right next to it. So it kind of shows how the testimony process works as well. So that's another help page that is um, useful. Um, next slide. Um, this is again, the, uh, the, um, the how to submit testimony and the link that I put uh, on the previous slide shows that link. Um, and it also shows how to join into Zoom if you want to attend a meeting, a hearing. It's all via Zoom, nobody's allowed into the um, Capitol. So let's review the bills that are upcoming. Okay, so you know, Raylene re was referring to bills. They have a <coughs> excuse me, a, a HB number. HB means house, house bill, 
and Senate bill is an SB, S is in Sam B. And they, there are numbers. And that's because the House introduces certain bills and the Senate also introduces maybe different bills. But in many cases, you have a House bill and a Senate bill that are identical. They're called companion bills. That means if one doesn't make it you know, in the process, that means there's a chance that the other one may. So that's why the, the people who are advocating for bills will always, you know, will try to do a bill in both the House and the Senate. So when we refer, like the first bill that I'm gonna be talking about, and we'll be talking about non-judicial foreclosure. And for people who live in condominiums, um, maybe non-judicial foreclosures is a good thing or a bad thing, it depends. If you're on the board of directors, the non-judicial foreclosure is a way for uh, the association to collect its maintenance fees. In other words, if somebody doesn't pay their maintenance fees and you, know, you don't wanna pay uh, a huge legal fees to go through um, a court foreclosure process, you can use a non-judicial process, which allows you to do it by written notice to the unit owner saying that you, know, you owe the association, you haven't paid your maintenance fees and you owe us money and therefore we're gonna take your unit. And so it's a way of, of, of uh, taking, uh, getting control of the unit. And then they, the association then takes the unit, rents it out and uses the rental income to pay the maintenance fees. And this is a good thing because if you have a person, a unit owner who's not paying their, their maintenance fees, uh, that means that you know, everybody else who is paying, you know, all the other unit owners end up subsidizing the people who are not paying. And so it's in everybody's best interest that everybody pay their fair share. I mean, that's the whole whole, whole reason for, for do, doing this. And non-judicial foreclosure is just a way that allows the board, the association to collect. And so there's two, two bills. There's one bill and that's, um, uh, let me see what it is. 606. It, yeah, 606. It, and it's uh, related, and, and it doesn't say condos, it's related to housing. And anyway, it passed out of its first committee. And what, and it's, it's like the governor's moratorium on eviction. You know, he's got a moratorium that says that landlords can't evict uh, their tenants during the pandemic. And so this bill was introduced by a legislator to say that condominiums can't do uh, non-judicial foreclosures. And I think uh, they have a date of June, 2023. And I think uh, some of the uh, opposition to this was, well, that's an awful long time. And, you know, associations, you know, can't wait three years to collect, you know, past due maintenance fees, because that puts an undue burden on everybody else who is paying their maintenance fees, right? And yeah, so anyway, it, it passed with amendments, but that was only yesterday. So I don't know what amendments, you know, they added to it, whether they're shortening the period or you know, making exceptions, saying well, some you know non-judicials you know can be uh, you know pursued and others cannot. But anyway, there is a bill that's in the legislature and it's moving. Uh, it's still alive, and it's Senate Bill 606 and it's House Bill 23, and they're both the same identical bill. And the next one for non-judicial foreclosures. This is another angle. Okay, first of all, the legislature in 1999, you know, passed a law that basically told condominiums that you know they could do non-judicial foreclosures. And then there were some lawsuits that says, no, 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 you can't do that because there's something called a power of sale, and that's something that's in a mortgage document that you you know when you go to the bank and you make a mortgage. And there's language in the mortgage document, the contract between the borrower and the lender that says that if you don't pay your mortgage payments, then I can take your, I can take, you know, your, your, your property without going to court. Okay. Because that's part of the agreement. And there are, there was some litigation that went all the way up to the Hawaii Supreme court that basically said, well, no condominiums, you can't do non-judicial foreclosures because you don't have this agreement like you know, the lenders do, but you don't have any document, uh, you don't have like a mortgage document that has a power of sale language that allows you to do uh, a foreclosure without going to court. And, and, and we don't care, and, and the Supreme Court said, we don't care about that 1999 
uh, bill that you guys keep pointing to that says, that, and that bill basically said that condominiums could do non-judicial foreclosure, that uh, that this the Hawaii revised statute uh, was sufficient to create that right. And the Supreme Court said, well, maybe, maybe not. So anyway, there is a bill in the legislature and it's Senate Bill 199 and House Bill 641. And this bill basically says, because of what the Hawaii Supreme Court did and disregarded the 1999 legislation that said condos could do non-judicial foreclosure, even if they didn't have the power of sale language in an agreement between uh, the homeowner and the association. Now, this bill says that you can, that a condominium can amend its governing documents, which means this declaration of the bylaws, which means you, you, know, you make a resolution and you send it out to the owners and you vote on it to say that you have a power of sale. Now you have an agreement, right? Because now you've got, you're gonna amend your declaration uh, to say that you have a power of sale. But anyway, that bill is also moving. It went through its first uh, committee hearing and it passed out with amendments. And the next uh, bill we're gonna be talking about is Senate Bill 784 and House Bill 599. And there's, there's several bills and I'm not gonna go into every one of them, but there, I think there's two or three bills in the legislature now that ha are on the same subject matter. Because of the pandemic, condominiums could not have, uh, uh, condominiums who could not have their, you know, who, you know whose uh, annual meetings in 2020 were scheduled to occur after mid-March, right? They never got to have them because the governor issued his order saying you couldn't have gatherings, right? And so, so, so there are many, many, many uh, condominiums who you know couldn't have their annual meetings because of the gathering, and you know so there these there are bills now who say that you know that condominiums can um, have their annual meeting electronically, and the reason why this is necessary is because the governing documents for condominiums don't have language that says that you can do it uh, the, the annual meetings remotely or electronically. And this, there is a statute that is, allows board meetings to be held in, you know, in, 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 in where all the board members can hear each other simultaneously. And so because that statute is there, you, you have all these board, board uh, you know, board of director meetings being held by Zoom and WebEx and GoToMeeting, right? Because of the statute. And so because, and, 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 uh, there was a concern that, you know, you have to include uh, 421J, which are the community associations and the co-op um, co uh, uh, associations, but both of them, both of those types of associations, because they are, most of them are incorporated as nonprofits, there's a provision under HRS 414-121 G's and George that allows nonprofit corporations to have meetings remotely. Okay, so this one, so only the condominiums are the ones who aren't able to have remote meetings. And so you had a situation where, you know, people gonna have, they couldn't have annual meetings. You know, there were people who um, wanted to get on the board or wanted to get off the board, they couldn't have elections. And, and so, so, so these, uh, uh, these two bills, 748 and 599, they basically are saying that condos can have meetings remotely and they can uh, do electronic voting or they can do uh, voting by mail. And so uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, and, and, and uh, one of the, the Senate bill had its first hearing and it passed out with amendments. And, uh, I'm, and, and that's because that bill also included provisions for 421J community associations and co-ops, which we now know are covered by another statute. So it's only gonna be condos. Okay, and then we're going to the next one. The next one, 729. Now this is interesting. Smoking in buildings, right? Raylene, how many, how many people, how many buildings do you know that are concerned about smoking? There's a buildings? lot, there's a lot, even, um... 
even cooking because they go through the vents. So people kind of don't like the smell of some, certain people's cooking. So that also raises a complaint as well. Uh, this one is yeah, what they're what the, this one is doing is there was a bill uh, passed earlier that uh, uh, related to chapter and now and this doesn't relate to the condominium statute. This relates to chapter three twenty eight J, and what that does is it, it it prohibits smoking in public places. That law was passed you know several years ago, and there is a provision in there that says that you cannot smoke, you know, this is cigarettes or anything like cigarettes, electronic cigarettes and marijuana in public places in condominiums. So this bill already, you know, several years ago said that you can't smoke in the common areas of hotels and, you know, condos, co-ops, community associations. You couldn't do it in the common areas. This bill now is prohibiting smoking in individual units of multiple unit residences. Okay, so now it's targeting the units. And I think this one may run into some problems. Uh, even though, you know, it's a health and safety issue and we all know that smoke kind of moves, especially if you go out into your lanai and, you know, here in Hawaii, everybody has their lanai doors open, right? And if your neighbor next door is smoking and the smoke comes in, it's very irritating, right? And even I, I know in my building, we have a, you can't smoke on the lanai rule, but you know, uh, if, even, even if you smoke in your unit, uh, you know, some of the smoke somehow permeates and goes into the other units and you have people complaining. You have, you have people complaining and they say it's a health and safety, but then on the other hand, you have people, I mean, buying a home is one of the biggest investments. And if you didn't have a no smoking rule, is it fair to pass this law? And then you have a smoker who bought the unit and maybe they are very conscientious and you know they close all their doors and you know they have something under their door so that the smoke doesn't get out. So they're very conscientious and yet now they can't smoke in their unit. Is that fair? Right. And so I think that's where the dispute is gonna, the, that's where the discussion is gonna be on these bills, whether it's fair to make, you know, to pass a law that makes something illegal that wasn't illegal yesterday, right? Yeah, that one. This one is going to be a tough one, a really tough one. Yeah. So anyway, but anyway, it 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 hasn't had a hearing yet, but you know it was introduced, and then we have, oh, this one's this one, sixty one. I think it's kind of and yeah. it, it comes up every year. Yeah. Okay, Senate Bill sixty one, House Bill two two one. Okay. And this is about proxies. And what it does is those of you who are listening, annual meeting time, you get a proxy in the mail. There are these boxes that they want you to check off. And there's like four boxes and I can't remember what all of them are. Well, one of them is uh, to the board as a whole uh, to be, uh, and to be shared. Among, in other words, to the board as a whole and the board all gets together and they vote and they say, okay, how many people want to vote for uh, Jane Doe and how many people want to vote for, you know, Robert Smith? And, you know, you, you divvy up the, the proxies and the board then votes those proxies. But anyway, this bill says, let's get rid of that box. And really, you and I both know this one comes up almost every year. Yeah, always. Proxies always come always. up. And so what are you hearing as to why these, why, why would anybody want to get rid of that box? Because I've been hearing some people complain about giving it to the board as a whole, because what if you don't like certain members of the board, you know? So now you've given your vote, but in my opinion, you also have the other box where you can give it to an individual, you know? So you may not want to give it to the board as a whole, but you have one board member that, you know, you like and you, you know, they think they're reasonable. So you can always give it to that individual board member, you know, so you and, have four yeah, and I have a choice because that's one of the boxes is a blank where yeah. you can, you can name somebody. Right. And that's when they're not saying, let's get rid of that box. Right. So anyway, yeah, I don't know how that's going to go, but, and, and what I'm saying hearing for some reason, people think that by marking that box, you give the board 
the power to perpetuate themselves, right? They vote for each other. You, right. If you mark, give it to the board as a whole, they're going to just vote for each other. And right. then we get, if you, and if you think you got a bad board and you give the proxies to the board, then you're perpetuating a bad board because they're yes. going to only vote for themselves. They just right? have to understand the rules. You don't have to give, you, I think because a lot of times for new people due to, to condominiums, they're taught to give it to the board as a whole. Um, I've seen a newsletter go out where it said to give it to the board as a whole and not to give it to an individual because that individual might have a different agenda than the board. So, um, so under that thought process, I think people just have to be re-educated that you don't automatically give it to the board as a whole if you don't want to. You can give it to an individual member of the board. Or you can give it to your neighbor if you want, right? If, or if you have friends in the building, you can give it to your neighbor or to your friend downstairs. Right. You can name right. anybody yes. in that blank. Right. Because if you if you give it to the board as a whole, you are continuing that you're you're part of the problem, you know. So um, yes, I, I don't think there's a problem with that. And then the next part of the bill, I think, is 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 a good thing because they're changing some language, and they're all, uh, where it says that you know it the old language says no managing agent, resident manager, or their employees shall solicit proxies, you know, for the uh, annual meeting. And what they've added now, which is, I think is a good thing, is association employees, because you know what it what what it, this was saying is you couldn't have the managing agent, which is like a Hawaiiana or an Associa or a Touchstone, right, or any of their employees solicit proxies, you know, uh, for people who are on the board. In other words, I guess what you know some people are afraid of is that you know the board once they're in, they become all powerful, and if you've got a managing agent and a resident manager that the board will use those people to get proxies. And that's not right. And it's not fair. And I guess if, if it's happening, it's wrong. It has happened. I mean, I, I there was one, um, and it happened to me too. I mean, I got a proxy and then the resident manager solicited. And I'm like, he's been there for 10 years. Does he not know the rules? But the managing agent caught it and wouldn't allow that proxy. So I still remain, I still retained that proxy. Yeah, yeah, see, so so I guess, you know, we just have to make sure and and, and, and having, other association members, you know, would probably, I mean, other association employees, you know, because some associations have large staff and sometimes you have an office manager, right? And, you know, or you, maybe you have a maintenance manager, but you have people who are always talking to people, always talking to the owners and the residents because they're on site and they see them every day, but yet you don't want these people, you know, soliciting proxies because it kind of looks bad because right. it's supposed to be a democratic process and every owner is supposed to have a vote and their vote should count. And, you know, you don't want the perception that the board that's in power is using association staff to solicit proxy because that's an awful, that's an awful thought that, you know, that that might be happening. Right. Right. So I, I you know, I, I think that this bill, you know, other than the, 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 the elimination of the, the box about the, proxy to the board as a whole, I think the rest of it is, is fine. And so, you know, and that one is also moving. The next one, oh, the upkeep, the upkeep of um, That's a big condominium, uh, the, the unclaimed possession. This is the one about, you know, if you, if you have, a, uh, if you have people who move out and they leave stuff, and I guess the example that we, we heard about was the bicycles, right? Right. Somebody moved out and they left their bicycle and then the association had to get rid of it. And under the statute now, if somebody moves out and leaves stuff, the association has to run an ad. Other Besides trying to contact that person by mail or email or telephone call, you're required under the current statute to run an ad in the newspaper, which runs you several hundreds of dollars, right? I mean, I think I heard that in one case it was $1,500. Yeah. And a yeah. bike is probably worth $10, right? And anyway, so now what, what this, uh, and, and the landlord tenant code, you know, talks about disposing of uh, tenant uh, uh, personal property has a provision that's similar, but it doesn't require publication. So that's what this bill does. It just eliminates the publication. It still requires the association, if the tenant leaves something, 
that you have to take um, uh, diligent steps to try to contact that person before you dispose of it. And, you know, and, and I, I, you know, tell condominiums, if you're going to be doing this, you need to, you know, um, uh, keep records. If you're going to, you know, give it to donate, donate it to a charity, or you're going to throw it away, you, you, you need to keep, um, uh, you know, records on, 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 on what happens with it. But anyway, that one uh, had a, it went through a hearing and it passed out with amendments. And because that was only yesterday, I don't know what amendments uh, you know were made. So we'll have to look on that one. And then, okay, three, uh, bill th uh, House Bill three hundred seven is oh, this is another bill that allows for um, electronic having vote. electronic meetings. Yep. So that's just like you know Bill seven hundred eight. But this one allows for the um, electronic or uh, machine voting, which is going yeah. to be quite interesting how that gets implemented if it passes, because that's going to be a big cost for the equipment and the software. And that's going to be passed on. It would be the managing agent probably buying it, but it's, but that cost is going to be passed on to all the associations under their um, umbrella. That will be kind of crazy. And yeah, the, to, and, and you know, there is a pet bill and I don't have the number of that, but you know, it, it's it's not anything you know uh, very earth shaking, and and what they what this bill does, but it, what it is, it's an opening. Whenever there's a bill with the subject matter, right? That's it, it, it allows you to to submit testimony, and what this bill is doing is saying that if you if you have a you know you know how the the internet has these vests and they have these certificates. And they say, you know, this animal is a, sort of, is a service animal. And this bill basically says it's bogus. We all know it's bogus, right? But this bill says it's bogus and you don't have to pay any attention to it. And so I think, you know, for, uh, and I think, you know, with our group, what we're going to do is submit some testimony that says, and besides that, what you need to do is beef up the, the law to say that, you know, when, when a, a request for reasonable accommodation is made, that somehow we get assurance that the person who's signing the request has actually seen the person and you know uh, made an evaluation that the person is disabled and it truly needs this emotional support animal uh, to alleviate the symptoms of the disability. But anyway, that gives us an opening. And we're kind of running out of time, I know. I so I quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, stay tuned and we will keep you, you know, uh, posted on, on what happens. And, and, and Raylene, this could be one of the subject of one of your uh, condo insiders down the road, right? So yes, anyway, sir. good luck next week and welcome aboard new co-host uh, of Condo Insider. And thank you uh, for the people who are uh, listening to this show. Thank you for joining us and please join us next week for Raylene's debut her first show so please uh, tell your friends next week Raylene is going to be on the show and uh, she would really really love for you to tune in and listen so thank you and mahalo for joining us thank you